from Hollywood. Vinnie Barnes in The Unexpected. The Unexpected. The Unexpected. Life is filled with the unexpected. Happy, romantic, tragic, and mysterious endings to our most ordinary actions. Dreams come true, or dreams are shattered by sudden twists of fate in The Unexpected. Who knows what strange drama may happen tomorrow, or an hour from now, or in just a moment. Who knows what destiny has in store for the lady down the street, the fellow at the next desk, or for you, yourself. Who knows? Listen in just a moment for the unexpected. Now, Vinnie Barnes, famous motion picture and stage star in a drama of the unexpected, titled Find the Man. Oh, school was over for that year. Another nine months marked off the calendar. Three months of vacation and then school again. But not for this teacher. No, I'd made up my mind. By next fall, I'd be lighting pipes instead of sharpening pencils. Hunting for collar buttons, not examination questions, and laying out bedroom slippers rather than planning lectures. Yes, by next fall, I'd be a different woman. Cora, is that you? I guess so. You're a little late. What were you doing? Buying a bathing suit. Oh, I'd like to see it. Here it is. In that little package? Oh, it's that kind of a bathing suit. Say, what are you up to? Up to? You know very well what I mean. You're planning something. That blue evening dress and that black thing. I can't imagine where you'll wear that. To bed. It's a nightgown. Cora, has something happened to you? Not yet, but I have hope. Could you diagram that sentence, Miss Atkins? I'd be glad to. Subject, Cora Atkins. Verb, tired. Very tired of teaching school. Object, a man. Uh, With a modifier, of course. Marriage. You mean you're deliberately going out to try to find a man? To collect a scalp. Exactly. Cora! Well, I have arranged to set my trap for two weeks in an exclusive resort at Owl Lake. I have baited it with three new hats, riding breeches, a cocktail dress, an evening gown, and two and a two-piece bathing suit. And you, my dear Gail, will need a different roommate next fall. Uh, I hope. <laughs> The hoot Inn was large and expensive. The meals were atrocious. The beds were hard and lumpy, but there were men. Lots of men. However, there was also competition. Oh, I just adore this place. It's simply marvelous. Don't you all think so, Miss Atkins, honey? That was Maybelle. She was blonde, petite, wide-eyed. A clinging vine with a strength of a boa constrictor. And she had a way with men. Particularly, my men. On the first day, I pulled on my riding breeches, strode down to the stables and flicked my shiny leather whip at Stephen Martin, a handsome stockbroker from Cleveland. Why, uh, yes, Mr. Martin. 
I really do believe I'd enjoy a canter this morning. They say that the view from Elk's Peak is simply breathtaking. Oh, Stacey, honey lamb, I've been looking all over for you. The lake's simply wonderful this morning, and I've got my swimming suit on underneath this little, um, what do you call it? But I'm sort of scared of the deep water. I'd like to have a man along just in case anything should happen. You don't mind, do you, Miss Atkins, honey? <laughs> That night, I had arranged a charming foursome of bridge. An elderly couple from Boston, a scholarly young archaeologist from Albuquerque, and my new cocktail dress. The cards were dealt, the hand was bid. The archaeologist was digging deep within my eyes when suddenly, someone trumped my king. Oh, Clifford, I'm so glad you're dummy. A little group of us are planning to drive into town for the Saturday night dance. And we've just got to have your car. You'll be a sweet potato and take us in, won't you, Clifford? Oh, now, don't you other folks fret. I've arranged for dear old Mrs. Pinkham to play instead. She just adores bridge. I had saved the blue evening gown for the hotel dance on Sunday night. All else had failed. But blue was my most flattering color. Tony Ginkus was a professional football player with a Tallahassee goat. As we danced, he held me in his arms like a pigskin, and I waited for the first forward pass. You, uh, you waltz very well, Mr. Ginkus. It's a lovely night, isn't it, Mr. Ginkus? I said it's a lovely night, isn't it? Huh? Would you, uh, would you like to walk out on the veranda? No. No, I suppose not. Just what are the hell you were uh, thinking about at this moment, Mr. Ginkus? Knut Rockney. Oh. Yes, I see. Well, let's not talk anymore. Let's just... Let's just sweep on into the night. Tony, Tony, you poor darling in this hot, stuffy old ballroom on a night like this. Time for our moonlight ride. Oh, now, don't tell me you've forgotten. Ooh. I'm fearful sorry to drag him away, Cora, but... We can't keep the horses waiting. No, I understand. Oh, do you, honey? Well, that's nice. It's a pity you aren't dressed for riding. The first week at Owl Lake was over. My wardrobe and I were exhausted. The following Monday, I put on an inexpensive black print dress that Dean Wilson had approved walked out to the veranda and buried my hopes behind MacDougall's development of the 19th century British novel. Good morning. Why, hello. Am I interrupting you? No, no, not a bit. Sit down, won't you? Well, thank you. Uh, you're Cora Atkins, aren't you? Why, uh, why, yes. Yes, I am. How did you know? I asked. Oh. I'm Max Thompson. Why, how do you do, Mr. Thompson? You know, I I've been watching you for the last week. But today you seem somehow more approachable. More like the sort of woman I'd like to know. But perhaps you'd care to join me. I was just heading up toward Elk's Peak. I hear the view is breathtaking. Max Thompson was tall, moderately attractive, quite literate. And in addition, he was extremely attentive. However... There were two questions about him that needed answers. A, was he single? And B, how would he react to Maybell? Oh, question A was answered the next evening as we canoed. Paddling gently toward the far end of our lake. You know, Cora, I've never married. I don't know why. <laughs> I used to think it was because I'd never met the right woman. Had someone with understanding and depth and a certain amount of culture. But now I'm afraid that... But if I met her, she wouldn't have me. Yes, I don't even think I'd have the nerve to ask her. She couldn't want me. What? Why, Cora, you've dropped your paddle. Um, 
Men worry about the strangest things. But question B was a more difficult problem. And on my last night at Owl Lake, the scent of magnolias wafted over my romance and I shivered with apprehension. I've heard all about him, but you know, I've never met him. How could I have overlooked you, Mr. Thompson? I can't imagine. Well, now, Cora, honey, since you're leaving tomorrow anyway, you probably won't get your packing done. I'd just be glad to take Mr. Thompson off your hands. We ought to get better acquainted. Don't you think so, Mr. Thompson? I'm very sorry, Mabel. Well. I have something to discuss with Miss Atkins. Maybelle melted away and I sat quite still, relishing my moment of triumph. Cora, my dear, this is really a serious moment for us both. We have such a great deal in common. We've had so many wonderful moments here this past week. And they can continue. They should continue. Oh, Cora, they must continue. I relaxed slightly. The crisis was past. I knew then that my days as a schoolteacher were over. You think the story is finished, don't you? But wait. Fate takes a hand. Wait for the unexpected. Now for the surprising conclusion to Find the Man, a Hamilton Whitney production written by Robert Libbett and Frank Burt and directed by Frank K. Danzig. The moon dipped low and my hopes ran high as Max lit his pipe, sighed, and spoke. Well, Cora, as you know, I... Well, as you must have guessed, I I have a proposition. I, I mean, a proposal for you to consider. Now, now, I don't want you to answer hastily. Take all the time you please before you make up your mind. Well, uh, I'm sure it won't be a difficult decision. Well, that's fine. As you may have concluded, I've spent a lot of time this week thinking you over. As a matter of fact, I even had you investigated. What? Oh, please don't be offended. I always do. Well, I... And you've more than justified my hope. Well, I'm glad of that, Max. Cora, this is your... our last night together at Owl Lake. And I feel it shouldn't be the end of our association. Why, no, Max, of course not. Then I know you'll consider what I have to offer. I haven't told you before, but I'm the superintendent of schools in a small town in Iowa. Oh. As you know, there's a great shortage of teachers, and I... No, Max, no, no. Now, my dear Cora, I told you not to be hasty. Why, I'm sure that the salary I can offer will make it more than worth your while to take over as head of our high school English department. Well, that was my summer vacation. Next year, I'm going to Columbia and work toward my master's degree. Or, on second thought, I may make it vaster. Find the Man starred Vinny Barnes. Listen in again soon when another of your favorite motion picture stars meets The Unexpected. <laughs> This program was transcribed in Hollywood.